mechanical harvester is picking cotton at sunset in a paddock near Moree in central New South Wales. Cotton breeder Dr Warwick Stiller walks into a hothouse filled with cotton planted in pots. These plants are being used for research. My name's Dr Warwick Stiller. I'm a cotton breeder and lead the breeding program for CSIRO Agriculture. We're based at the Australian Cotton Research Institute near Narrabri, New South Wales, which is really the heart of the cotton growing regions. In Australia, the, the modern cotton industry only started in the early 1960s. At that point in time, we were using varieties and growing techniques that were developed largely in the US, which weren't necessarily all that well suited to the conditions that we have here in Australia. So through a, a whole range of different science activities on the management side and as well as on the breeding side has brought us to where we are now, where we have the highest cotton yields anywhere in the world. And that is attributed to both the genetics or the varieties that we have, as well as the way that those varieties are, are managed and grown by farmers. Out in the field, the cotton plants have been defoliated, so that all that is left is the fluffy bowls of cotton clinging to the brown stalks. Large round bales of cotton wrapped in yellow plastic are also waiting in the field, ready for collection. The cotton industry as it is now is very much a GM crop, and so that's happened over the last 20 years, where we've seen GM traits introduced through breeding into these modern varieties that make them much more resistant to, to pests. Therefore, you don't need to spray very many chemicals on the crops these days in comparison to what we used to. Weed management through those technologies have also been improved. Before the cotton plants are defoliated, usually by aerial spraying, they are green bushy shrubs about a metre in height. A CSIRO scientist is inspecting the fruit on the shrubs, which contains the fluffy white lint inside. But there's a range of other new technologies, at least from the breeding side, that are coming through. And they involve things like gene editing techniques, and then following on down the track is the way then that those varieties are managed. We've got a number of labs, each looking at different things. This one here is our wet chemistry lab. A lab assistant is filling containers and test tubes with a liquid solution, which is then being analysed by a machine, and she is writing down the results. Principally what we're doing here is trying to understand the nutrition of cotton. We have a, a lab that's looking at diseases, well, it's what we call a pathology lab. We have a molecular biology lab, which is used to identify different genes that are actually in plant material, which is important for us in our modern age of cotton growing with um, transgenic cotton, it's like quality assurance. When the breeders go through the process of actually breeding the genes into the cotton, we want to make sure that those genes have actually got into the, in the cotton plants that we've done, as well as uh, looking at whether there's some resistance to pesticides or even resistance from the insecticides that are contained within the, the plants themselves. A lab assistant is putting tiny caterpillars in a tray made up of small plastic cups containing food. The trays are covered with a clear plastic so that the caterpillars can't escape and breathing holes are added once the tray is sealed. Caterpillars at various stages of growth can be seen in the lab storeroom. We collaborate with other people within the industry to send us samples from all over and we screen those animals to see whether or not they're developing resistance to the insecticide that's been engineered into the cotton. And then we report those results back to the industry and the industry uses those to try and outsmart the pest. A senior research scientist is examining caterpillars through a microscope. So we are doing this together and then add it onto the transgenic crops so that farmers will not have to use synthetic chemicals to spray their crops. And that is the, a very big step from what we used to do years and years back. Even before I started here 24 years ago, farmers were spraying cotton about 24 times in a season. Every three days, there is an aircraft spraying chemicals and you know the hazard of synthetic chemicals. Once you spray it, it's in the atmosphere, the environment, and people get sick out of it. So the idea of this technology is to cut down the use of this synthetic insecticide. 
Ian Taylor from the Cotton Research and Development Corporation is standing in a field of green bushes. The cotton bowls have split open, revealing the white fluffy cotton and seeds inside, but they're not quite ready for picking as the plants are still green and leafy. Various sensors and dome-shaped greenhouses have been set up in the field to monitor the crops, and scientists are analysing the data from this test crop on electronic recorders. If you look at the, the crop in front of us, it's actually 98% uh, transgenic is the uh, industry footprint, which means that we actually use 90% less pesticide on our cotton crops than what we did 10 to 15 years ago. So that's a huge benefit to the environment. Our water use is 40% less than what it uh, used to be. The Australian cotton industry is one of the only industries in the world that actually benchmarks its environmental performance. So we have 45 environmental indicators that we measure basically every five years and then we actually report our performance to the world in terms of how we manage our cotton crop. We are looking at the current production systems but we've also got a very strong future focus and what we're trying to do with that future focus is position the industry to be able to prepare for our future needs. So we're looking at what will the industry look like in 15 to 20 years time and what research do we need to be undertaking to ensure that the cotton industry remains productive and viable in 15 to 20 years.